So I purchased a bunch of blank CDRs online to use for this video, and I guess I encountered some success? The first handful of games I tried, however, did not work right at all. They constantly stuttered and had absurd loading times. I figured I burned the games wrong, but all the guides I found online were instructing to do exactly as I was. Let's cut to a little fun fact. The 3DO came out before the ESRB was established. At this time, games were not rated. Twisted came out in 1993, a year before ratings for games became mandatory. As such, there's no indication of an age range on the box. Even once the ESRB came out, the 3DO started its own standards of ratings. E, 12, 17, and AO. So why do I bring up this point with Twisted? I figured since there was no sort of warning on the box, it was essentially rated E for everyone. Nope. I'm pretty sure this Fez character here even dropped the F-bomb at one point. Oh yes, this is just great! Motherfucker. Did he just say motherfucker? <laughs> As promised, I'm going to start with the exclusives, which are games that you will only find on the 3DO system. So first off was a game called Petonk. As I was loading the game, this happened. Yeah, that's something I had to deal with countless times making this video. It means that the game couldn't load fast enough and threw me back to the boot sequence. It was really inconsistent with these burn games, but thankfully with the authentic discs this was never an issue. So I'm pretty sure my 3DO is fine. A good way to tell if the games you burned are working or not, to my experience, was if the green loading light had stopped for a prolonged period of time. At least, when the game was intended to be loading something. This is basically the same as that little orange flashing light on the PSP. And that red light means, well, you know, the system works. Anyways, Petonk is a pinball game where you play as some kind of UFO pinball. I have no idea why it's called Petonk. What a strange name. The game controls really badly. I tried to have fun with this one, but I just wasn't feeling it at all. But hey, at least I got the highest score. Then I tried Crash and Burn, which was the only game available during the system's first month and a half on the market. Not only that, but it didn't even have multiplayer! It said that this was because of changing hardware throughout development, preventing developers from having a finished product on time. Apparently as a whole this game is pretty fun, but it utilizes a constantly loading 3D world. The CDRs I used wouldn't let me do much past the first couple seconds in-game, unfortunately. To be frank with you, I'm shocked it even let me get this far. To give you a further example of how my CDR setup was poor, this game has FMV cutscenes that introduce you to the roster of characters. This is the type of thing I would constantly deal with from FMV titles running from my bad CDR setup. Movement is a key to my success. And movement is a key to my success. To get a key to my success. To get the crowd screw success. Which is why I tried to avoid any games that made heavy use of these. If you're still confused as to what's wrong with my CDR setup, then that makes two of us. Next up was Blade Force. Next up was Blade Force. This one also up was Blade Force. This one also loaded in one swing. It appears to be loaded in one swing. It appears to be the It appears to be the sort of game that would control terribly. However, to my surprise, it actually controlled really well. Responsive? Always knew where I was headed. Apparently it's even better if you get the 3DO flight stick. You're a guy with a helicopter blade attached to your back, flying across a strange city, shooting stuff. You collect pickups like health and fuel, and electricity for your shots. Sometimes the perspective was glitched. I'm really having trouble saying anything else about it. Was fun for a couple minutes at best, but I don't really recommend it. I tried a game called Gritters. I thought it seemed like it could be pretty fun. Looks like some kind of Sokoban clone. Well, no, not really. I'm not sure what you would call this game. It's definitely a kind of puzzler. You gotta collect green orbs, then enter the finishing tile to complete a level, taking you to the next one. There's only 30 levels in the game, which seems kind of short to me. Nonetheless, I wouldn't want to sit through 30 levels anyways. The game plays very slow, and often as you wait for certain boxes to go into certain places, I'll stick with Chip's Challenge. Now how about some FPS games? The 3DO is home to a number of weird first-person shooters that are pretty unique. Escape from Monster Manor. I was really digging the first stage. The atmosphere was great and the music was spooky. There's some kind of story here having to do with collecting all the pieces of some medallion, one in each stage. The game is pretty fun, but its environments are very repetitive. Still, the game is extremely charming. There just isn't enough variety. As far as I know, there's just one weapon in the game, being this taser pistol thing. I was constantly wondering when I'd get the next thing, but I never did. The second stage gave me an expectation for the rest. It's just gonna be the same sort of thing over and over, isn't it? I wanted to love this one. Instead, I just liked it. Charming, but repetitive. Iron Angel of the Apocalypse. This one is seen as a bit of a cult classic. It even had a sequel, though for that game it also had a PC port in addition to its 3DO release. Why is it so beloved? Uh, I don't know. The frame rate is terrible despite taking place entirely in claustrophobic corridors, the gameplay is some of the most repetitive I've ever seen, and the controls versus collision is really bad. However, the music was good, and the whole user interface was neat too. That can't be why people love this though, right? There were some FMVs that played that I had to skip and apparently people loved these, so maybe that clouds the nostalgia? 
The game itself reminds me of a mix of Alien vs. Predator on the Jaguar to Zero Tolerance on the Genesis, yet somehow I find those two infinitely more engaging than this one. A mercenary is very strange. Jumping into this one, I had no idea what was going on. It wasn't long until my CDRs decided not to put up with it any longer. I found out this game is rather FMV heavy, so it makes sense why it wouldn't want to proceed. Still, what the heck is this game? The reception seems pretty in favor of it. It has something to do with entering virtual reality, and I guess these are supposed to be other players playing the game elsewhere, supposedly? I don't know, man. Weird. Diverting from FPS games, the last 3 exclusive I tried was Twisted, which we talked about earlier. Twisted has multiplayer. Kind of. It's the sort of multiplayer where you'd only need one controller for, though you can use multiple controllers if you want. Too bad they're all assigned to player one, but hey, at least it gives me a way to experience the daisy chaining. I'm not big on this game. In fact, the two friends I played with didn't seem to fancy it much either. It was actually a lot of fun for the first couple of rounds, but you begin to see the game's patterns and it basically becomes like the Seen It DVD game series and that after one go, you've pretty much seen all it has to offer. A full game takes about an hour and that's far too long, as you've experienced it all after about 20 minutes. Using multiple controllers instead of swapping back and forth also kind of sucked because you could really cheat other players into failing since every controller is player one. I often press buttons thinking it was my turn out of confusion. If you want to get all your friends mad at each other, then here's one way to do it. I'm gonna blame this more on the game itself than the system because other 3 do multiplayer games don't work like this. So in terms of multiplayer, I then tried Battlesport. You can get power-ups to cause chaos to your friend while you nab the ball and try to throw it successfully into the goal. Pretty good stuff. However, this is a single or two-player game only, so no third controller was made useful here. This is one of those games that made it to the three competing platforms. Similarly, this next game, Offworld Interceptor, made it to the others as Offworld Interceptor Extreme. So yep, it's one of those that started as an exclusive, then made it elsewhere with additional content, making this one pretty much obsolete. I only got this one to boot successfully once or twice, and when I did, the game was... admittedly pretty bland? I don't really understand the appeal. Basically, you and a friend drive monster trucks around various landscapes with the intention of wrecking the other player's vehicle. There's power-ups, teleporters, bad collision... yeah, I didn't care much for this one. Hi, I'm Captain Quasar, and I don't have a robot dog. Surely you're mistaking me for someone else. This game looks very uncanny. A bunch of low-poly six-pack dudes running around in pajamas? With massive chins? Seems like perfect nightmare fuel. However, once the strange visuals get past you, this game is extremely fun to play with a friend. Solo, I'd imagine not so much, but causing chaos on these unsuspecting... whatever these are? Pirates? It's just so entertaining. I don't know how much there is to this game, but I dig it. I'll have to pick this one up eventually. Ball's Director's Cut was something. I know this is on Genesis and Super Nintendo, so this is probably the ideal choice when it comes to playing with balls. It's charming and I love the animations, but it feels like a lot of those other early 3D fighting games. Just... alright. I don't love or dislike it. In multiplayer, I was only able to figure out how to load up one of these maps. Hopefully I was missing out on an option somewhere. Bust a Move. This one I had high expectations for. However decent its single player might be, the multiplayer consists of just one board and has five different intervals of difficulty. Yeah, this needed more variety. As is, this is plain and simple, bust-a-move multiplayer. Disappointing. Those were the only multiplayer games I tried with my friends. I might have done a couple more had they not been busy with their own lives, you know. But there are a few actual multiplayer games for the system. And many that have it feel like they were added as a last-ditch effort. So who's to blame here? The game developers, maybe? Perhaps there was a study that was done and showed not many owners of the 3DO had more than one controller. With how long it's been since then, it's hard to say. But I have to admit, the 3DO did have some additional options. Super Street Fighter 2, Primal Rage, Mad Dog McCree, and its sequel. Yeah, those are both on 3DO if you can believe it. Unfortunately, 3DO light games are out of the budget for this video. With the disappointing aspect of multiplayer covered, I decided to continue with my underwhelming investment and discover what else the 3DO had to offer from its official library. Out of pure curiosity, I tried the following games. Wolfenstein 3D. This port of Wolfenstein 3D is astonishing. It controls phenomenally and has both improved graphics, music, and sound. I truly think this is the definitive way to play Wolfenstein 3D. The presentation is just so consistently good that I gotta keep playing. Well done. Then came Doom. This was not so well done. Every time I bring up this game, people are quick to defend it by redirecting me to a video by Rebecca Heinemann, original designer of this port. It was rushed. That's all you really need to know. But to be more elaborate, it plays terribly, and even in the smallest windowed option mode, it's not good. Wolfenstein 3D proved it could be done. Doom proved it could also be done horribly. This is often seen as the worst port of the game, even behind the Super Nintendo, which was a whole generation behind. This port adds a new soundtrack to the game, which is really great. Apparently the composers had no idea what kind of game Doom was when they were sent the mini references, so they had total creative freedom. Not bad. The port is just bad, though. Even in retrospect, it should be avoided. 
My boy Optimus6128 is working on an updated variation of the port, improving performance and quality options in the rendering engine. He even added some extra blood options and optional PSX sound effects. He calls it Optidoom, which is currently on version 0.2. It's a solid attempt, though it still has some issues. Keep a lookout for that one. We'll talk more about 3DO homebrew towards the end of this video. How about a couple more FPS games? While not a 3DO exclusive, it's also on PC, Killing Time is one of the games I hear most about for the system. However, it utilizes FMV characters in-game. Neat idea for its time, but I already know that means these CDRs are not going to have a good time being read. The game involves ghosts, I think, or reflections of memories. Seems interesting. Turns out I'm a ghost too, because I can walk right out of the game. Yeah, I don't think this is supposed to happen. I tried talking to some party greeter who told me I need an invitation first. I walked off and came back to find the building had completely vanished. This was getting too spooky, man, so I moved on to something else. Cyberdillo. Also on PC. I was only able to make this game work once. And thank goodness for that. Quarantine. Oh my god, my ears! Like those previous games, it also made it to the PC. Okay, Quarantine isn't really a first-person shooter per se, more like Carmageddon, but it does take place in the first-person perspective and you're gonna do a lot of killing, so... Well, anyways, I guess this game is a bit of a Crazy Taxi-esque game. Except this one is mature content. I was only able to help one customer before the CDR locked up on me. From the little game time I had, it seemed fun, but the handling was very loose, and it always felt like I was going way too fast. Always bumping into things that came out of nowhere. Backing up was an annoying process as well. One you'd have to do a lot since you're always being tossed about. There's potential here. Unfortunately, I didn't get long enough of a play session to do a critique of it. There are a good few more actual first-person shooters for the game system, like one called Space Hulk that I didn't bother to try. Graphically, it looks outstanding. I love the 3D creatures they modeled and their movement is very fluid. But I've heard this one has a learning curve you need to get over first. I'm just trying to get a feel for the system's library, so I wasn't really willing to use a CDR on something I probably wouldn't get much out of. We've looked at enough FPS for the system already anyways. You know, the 3DO does have a lot of these, and yet not a single shmup exists on the system. It's so strange, because with how the console is being marketed to developers, it seems like the perfect bandwagon for shmups. Anyways, let's move on. Road Rash. You can't really do a 3DO video without talking about Road Rash, correct? Well, somehow this actually managed to load despite the big loading 3D environments. I can see why people like this game. It's pretty fun. I think the goal is to either deplete everyone else's health bars or finish in first place. I was told this game had multiplayer, but it seemed like the only option was alternating controllers after each turn. I'd love to be proven wrong, but unfortunately after one map the CDR couldn't take it anymore and crashed, so I moved on. Here's Putt Putt Goes to the Moon. It was pretty nostalgic to go back to this one. It wasn't all too playable for me since the disc speed would load one sound file of speech, then wait about a dozen seconds for the next one. I'm sure this is just a fault of the burning technique. But then some funky things happened. This car here? He's named Firebird. He asks, Show me what you want to do! So I showed him what I wanted to do. Eventually I clicked on this butterfly outside, then... No. Show me what you want Um... You probably think I edited that. I didn't. This is the full sequence of what happened. I have done no editing to the audio balance. Ah. The 3DO made an on-command YTP for me. This is one of the more rare 3DO titles as far as I know. Just go for the PC version. Putt-Putt landed on the moon and then the game crashed, so I guess he's stuck there now. I had always wondered about Theme Park. My love of Roller Coaster Tycoon had me stop and stare at this one in the shops, deciding whether or not it was worth looking into. Not bad, but not great. Certainly one of the more entertaining 3DO games I've played so far. No doubt it would be better with the mouse peripheral, but I've played and reviewed Roller Coaster Tycoon on the Xbox, so it isn't a bother to me. I guess this is another game I'll eventually add to the collection. The Need for Speed. This should be a familiar title to you guys, probably without the The or Road and Track Presents written before it. Yeah, this series wasn't always about what it is today. I'm not sure if this is timed or not, but it was initially a 3DO exclusive. Think of that, a 3DO exclusive title creating a popular series that is still ongoing to this day. This first entry was basically for your car enthusiasts. Oh yeah, this one is FMV heavy, so I doubt this game is going to get very far on these CDRs. Talk about a bad menu system, what am I supposed to do with this information? There's a road picture, a picture of two cars, a steering wheel, some dude, and the ignition. First thing I wanted to see was if the game had multiplayer, so I tried the picture of the two cars, figuring that might be multiplayer. This took me to a car selection screen, so I picked a car and... Oh my god, it's just a bunch of short video clips with wacky effects thrown onto it. This truly is one of the most 90s things I've ever seen. Next I was thrown back to the menu. What kind of game is this? And what the heck could this dude's face mean? Let's find out. Alright, this is how it works. You can stroll this puppy out and go up against the best times, or... What? What is it? 
the loading screens are still JPEGs. Oh, my beating heart. Wait, what? I'm actually in the game? Well, color me surprised. Not sure how the CDRs couldn't handle some others like freaking Putt-Putt and seems to run this just fine. Signs of a well-optimized game, maybe? I was able to load up a couple maps until some graphical glitches appeared and eventually it stopped altogether. Dang, it was looking so promising. Total Eclipse. Went to the PS1 as Total Eclipse Turbo. This was one of those games that was aimed to sell 3DO units, to demonstrate its advanced technology. I appear to be piloting some form of deformed pretzel, but okay, yeah, well, it's a 3D game, all right. How do I turn around? How do I turn around? How do I turn around? All right, okay, so I'm leaving the planet now. Next level, maybe? Yeah, I'm done with this. Next up, Soccer Kid. Started off as an Amiga game, went to a number of other platforms in the years following. This game is actually really fun. I love it. The story? Some soccer kid comes to terrorize y'all's neighborhood. I mean, look at these people. They're just going about their business, then soccer kid comes up and whacks their shiznit. There's one major problem with this game. It relies on your soccer ball to get rid of enemies. Yeah, these everyday folk are your enemies, I guess? Going near them hurts for some reason. The ball needs to be carried across gaps and spike traps, but in many cases that seems to be an impossible task. So then you have to run off and hope not to get hit? And while you can jump real high, you can't jump very far? So getting hit is very likely to happen. Maybe there's some technique to this one, but the CDR gave out after the first level, so I wasn't able to get any further than that. Not bad. I'll have to get this one at some point. Mazer. A 3DO port of some arcade game I've never played. It's like Alien Syndrome and Robotron 2084 had an uninspired child. Loud and obnoxious, controls very poor. I have no idea how you're supposed to play this, I just kept dying. Hurry Gary, the scary robot movie's on! Is there some kind of dodge move I can activate? Uh, I don't care enough. Starfighter was another one of these games used to advertise the power of the 3DO, and wowee! This actually is very impressive! Definitely the best looking game on the 3DO. I think this alone shows that the 3DO is not a bad system, if anything it's just improperly marketed. Just flying around this big open world is actually pretty exciting. It controls really well. Comparing to the PS1 port, it's obvious that this is a far better experience visually on 3DO, even the PC port which just looks like the PS1 port upscaled. My CDR wouldn't run this one for too long, but the little time I spent with it was a blast. There's 15 stages, and I assume they all have their own unique missions. If just flying around is a blast, the missions must be a lot of fun. Alright, that's it. I'm definitely getting this one in the future. The Impossible Machine is a game of cause and effect, specifically the Goldberg effect. You're either given puzzles to solve yourself, or the ability to create your own puzzles. This is an incredible game that provides hours of fun. However, it was truly a game designed for a mouse. This is the only console port of the game. If only I had that Super Nintendo controller converter for 3DO, cause maybe then I could use the Super Nintendo mouse. I wonder if that would even work with it? Someone with access to both has got to try this. But yeah, without a mouse this gameplay could be a bit of a chore. Still great fun regardless. I might pick this up someday. I guess it's pretty hard to screw this one up. Lemmings is available on practically everything, even earlier consoles. This port has new music, which is nice, though some prefer the original MIDI soundtrack, as do I. It lacks that charm of the original. While many ports of Lemmings use passwords, the 3DO version didn't really need to rely on that given the internal storage. However, it does anyways, which feels like a step backwards. This one has some kind of level selection option that I was unfamiliar with. I think these account for difficulty levels? Nevertheless, starting on the Amiga, Lemmings has become somewhat of a port standard, at least in terms of homebrew. This is an official game for the 3DO, but would the homebrew community have done it better if Psygnosis didn't? Well, we'll get a rough estimation of the 3DO homebrew scene's dedication shortly. My bad selection of CDRs for this video was pretty disappointing, as in some ways I feel this cheated me from getting the true 3DO gaming experience. Though perhaps rightfully so, due to my own cheating in the matter. But when all's said and done, from what authenticity I could get out of the 3DO, I'd have to say the reasons so far to own one are slim. It has the best version of Starfighter for sure, and some good to great ports of other games you might be familiar with such as Theme Park, Wolfenstein 3D, and it has Gex. Decent multiplayer experiences are unfortunately few and far between. Captain Quasar was great. Battlesport is good fun, but available elsewhere. Like Offworld Interceptor, which frankly I didn't enjoy at all. There are much better versions of Bust a Move out there with more to offer. Balls is... fine? For a couple minutes? Twisted is just strange. I wanted to like it, but it's the definition of one and done. In terms of its exclusives we looked at earlier, none of them I'd really justify purchasing the system for. Heh. <laughs> that might be the conclusive summary for a lot of you, but I'm not done just yet. You've probably been waiting for this one, 3DO Homebrew. Sometimes an underwhelming console can be saved by its community being dedicated enough to keep it alive into the decades. With the 3DO, uh... I gotta be honest, the number of people actively working on 3DO Homebrew is likely in the single digits. One thing that really interests me were emulators. 
From what I could tell, only two exist, one for the Chip 8 programming language, and the NES. The Chip 8 emulator runs alright on the technical side, clearly there are some incompatibilities, but its controls are basically non-decipherable. I tried to find rhyme or reason to it, it just always seemed to react at complete random. The only thing that worked properly to my experience was the D-pad. Also, look at that splash screen. Was that necessary? The footage of this emulator I captured through the 3DO emulator on PC, known as 4DO. You can only load one ROM per disc burn, and this would allow me to test multiple games without having to constantly run through CDRs. I only have so many here, and I need a lot of them for the Dreamcast video I'm gonna make soon. Don't worry, all footage in this video is captured from a real 3DO. It's only with the Chip 8 and NES emulators that I had decided to make the exception. Just in case, though, I did try the Chip 8 emulator on the 3DO hardware once with Space Invaders. It ran exactly the same as it did on the 4DO emulator. The NES emulator, called Lame NES, is exactly as this name implies. It plays at less than one frame per second. In fact, I think saying that is generous. This is as far as I could get in Super Mario Bros. As with Chip 8, I did burn a disc of Lame NES just to make sure it would work, but it really did not like the CDRs I was using, or something, because the best I could get out of them was the emulator's title screen followed by a crash. Never got into the game ROMs themselves. If you have a good pack of CDRs, you might be able to get into World 1-1 of Super Mario Bros, but have fun waiting. I sat on this screen for 10 minutes in the emulator, at which point I just gave up. It might have crashed, I'm not sure. Maybe it performed better on the actual hardware, but I doubt it. Even the emulator's author states that it is very much a proof of concept only. Nothing more. I tried Balloon Fight as well since it was the only other game I could immediately think of that didn't have a long intro screen. This is all that happened. Nothing else showed up beyond these graphics. So yeah, don't bother with this. Even if you did want to try it out, you're wasting a CDR each time because like with the Chip 8 emulator, it can only load the one ROM you burned with it. Configuring everything to actually work on the 3DO is a bit of a hassle in itself. It's been a while since I recorded this stuff, so I'm not fresh with it, but you have to compile the ISO in a specific way, then use a specified homebrew program to sign the ISO for playability on the system. I made the mistake of not signing it the first couple times, which resulted in an unreadable disc. Many regrets were made. The only merit this has is cursed curiosity anyways. Best to just admire from a distance, like through your video screen whilst I document it. And that's all you're going to see regarding emulation on the 3DO hardware. Quite a shame. However, we still have some homebrew to look at. The RSA key of the 3DO was only cracked 9 years ago in 2010, which some speculate is the reason for its homebrew scene being, well, not very dedicated at all. You're probably wondering why I say only 9 years, as if that's not a long time ago. Well, the thing is, by that point, the 3DO was obsolete in every sense of the word, and most by that point had forgotten about its existence. So, only a small handful of people would probably even be qualified enough to do something with the system past this point, and adding to that, would they even want to, with such an obscure forgotten console? How many potential players are they even going to get? Well, regardless of this, some dared to try. Space Invaders Invaders by Sebastian Mihai. A unique twist on an oh-so-familiar concept. It uses original sprites, however, there's no audio whatsoever. You can swap between all the invaders at any time, though I believe it's randomly selected. You just press the B button to go to another one of the ships. Your opponent seems to also be random, moving about with no discernible consistency, firing constantly. The fact that this exists in such a small library of homebrew for the system is enough to say, okay, I respect it. Just feels a bit like wasted potential with what little is here, to at least maybe do a little more with it? There isn't really a reason to boot this up a second time. Crappy Compilation by Blah Blah, the most active homebrewer for the 3DO. I didn't make up that name, that's what he called it. Included are four mini games that he made for the 3DO. This one didn't like my CDR at all. It got into the menus, but each time I selected a game, it would crash to the 3DO boot sequence. Here's what the games looked like when played through the 4DO emulator. So, they're a bunch of mini-games, really. Short, but, well, I guess one might call them sweet. I really dug this one game where you're supposed to shoot all the Panasonic M2's competition from sliding in and taking the spotlight. As a reminder, that was supposed to be the 3DO's follow-up, which was basically doomed to, well, these consoles here, Icebreaker 2. A developer known as 3DO Experience created a game called Icebreaker for the 3DO, which was an officially released title back in the 90s. Icebreaker 2 is the lost sequel he created back when, but it wasn't until 2011 where he finally released it to the public for free. I haven't played the original, but... wait a minute. This isn't just Icebreaker 2. No, there's a whole bunch of stuff on here. Let's see, rocks in space? Okay, just a bunch of space rocks getting uncomfortably close to the screen. Purple submarine? Uh, okay. Virtual Murphy? What? Virtual Murphy? What could that be? Tasty. All right, let's just get on with Icebreaker 2. Your triangle going around breaking other triangles, specifically blue ones. They're ice. I believe they all eventually turn blue, but you can't break the ones that are not yet blue. Break them all and you win, I guess. Also, don't touch the living triangles. They hurt you. Then I found out you can actually shoot them. Yeah, take that, you triangle bitch. I don't know, there's a mild entertainment factor, but it's nothing special. 
What the hell? There's imposter blue triangles now? I think I'm done with this one. Game over, dude. There's one more 3DO homebrew title that's worth looking at, being complete onside soccer by someone who refers to themselves as GDG Publishing. This became available in 2008, but for a price. $39.99. This game looks outstanding for 3DO Homebrew, but I'm not sure how many, even in 2008, would be willing to spend that kind of money on it. The remaining Homebrew on the 3DO consists mostly of Hello World type software like graphical test demos and other unnoteworthy mockups. There's some fan translations for Japanese games, since the system is after all region free, as well as hacks for games like Need for Speed that accelerate the speed of your car, for the 3DO release of the game is infamous for being ironically slow. Perhaps I've missed out on some noteworthy 3DO Homebrew, but this stuff is very, very poorly documented. The 3DO homebrew scene is bleak, and doesn't show any signs of catching up, besides that Optidoom project we looked at earlier. What an unfortunate fate for a system without anti-piracy. If the 3DO wasn't as expensive in its prime, there would have probably been a more expansive library with better games, as developers would have more of a reason to invest in the system. What holds the 3DO back most today is the availability for the most part. You're pretty much going to need to rely on eBay for more games. Then today there's still the obstacle of price, and this is going to be the major conflict for most. While 3DO games themselves aren't very expensive, the hardware is, particularly controllers. Reliability is something to consider as well, since 3DOs as a whole are known for failing disc trays. The SC10 lacks that issue, which is something to consider, but then you also have to consider that the games are 9 out of 10 times going to be cheaper for the other systems they're available for. Except probably not the Saturn. Saturn games are pretty much universally expensive. But PlayStation 1 games? Where a good portion of these games ended up on? They'll probably cost you less than 5 bucks. There's just no reason to select 3DO over its successful competition. So, I don't think the 3DO is a bad system, but do I recommend it? The short answer is simply... no. Nonetheless, you may now consider yourself educated on what the 3DO did, what it can do now, and what holds it back. So, do you think you'd like to own a 3DO? Did you ever previously want to own a 3DO? Let me know in the comments. I'm interested to hear what you think.